Okay, well, welcome to the latest Developer Diaries, and today we're kicking it off. We've been on a bit of a break because we've been working on Valence 6, and we're about to showcase a bit of Valence 6 and then show some new features that are in the Nitro App Builder uh, Grid and Edit Grid widget. Uh, Sean, do you want to kick it off with the, some of the portal changes and... I think we lost Sean. I'm here. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, do you want to kick it off with some of the portal changes? And Oh, sure. All right, so as you can see, uh, the, uh, the the login screen has, has, has changed pretty drastically. Um, but as far as functionality, uh, it's the same, you know, in terms of select, select language, password, um, you know, and you'll still be able to theme all this through the the usual uh, hook JS. So if you want to go and log in. Yep. Oh, wait. Oh, hopefully this, I forgot to kick on my VPN. Hopefully this is, kills my Zoom. Okay, can you still hear me? Yep. Okay, great. Okay, so here is the, you know, uh, an updated launch pad. <clears throat> uh, you can see we've made the tiles uh, much smaller, but it just, it seems, you know, it's obviously it's all opinion, but it just, it feels a lot easier on the eyes, I think. Um, if you could, you know, because you don't have enough applications in here, if you could just make your browser height a bit smaller, just to show, um, you know, as you scroll that the tabs will, or that the category will stick. Okay, so can you see it now smaller? Yep. Okay. So notice as he scrolls, you know, now we'll fix that header so it's it's easier to know what category you're looking at. Okay, that's, you can go back to normal size now if you want. Thank you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so the left slide out menu has, you know, we, we've removed the logout and the, it, now it's just your applications. Um, you can collapse each section now. Yep, and you know, same functionality wise, if you hover over an application, you could make it a favorite and you know, we haven't taken anything away. Um, so the logout now and, and all the other, you know, portal setting type uh, windows are all the way to the right. So if we go all the way to the right, yep. So if we click that settings icon, so notice the logout is, is there now. And you know, this screen has been consolidated <clears throat> as well. And notice the two-step authentication is, it's no longer a beta feature. So that's just there now to set up. Uh, so maybe switch to, or maybe click that monochrome. So each, there's only two themes now, actually I should mention that first, if you drop those themes down. Um, we removed the metal theme. So we just have a light and dark theme now. Um, if you click the monochrome, you'll see in the background, oh, click that again. Click it one more time. Okay, something's going on there. Oh, this and I guess we should just say that <laughs> <laughs> Valence 6 is currently in beta and we, I think we expect to release it into um, production and, or say it's out of beta. Um, for the common virtual power up, which will be, I think, September 14th, if I'm, I think I'm right, based on memory. So what you yeah. see is beta, so if something pops up, we'll be taking care of it, of course. It's our disclaimer there. Yes, right, uh, right. So monochrome just, you know, it, it, it removes the colors. Um, and if you go back and maybe switch to the dark theme. With monochrome on? Uh, sure. And then maybe take monochrome off now. So yeah, so there's one look and okay. Um, if you bring that menu up, the top right menu again, mm -hmm. um, you know, then you have the change password, the lock screen, and then the about valence. And then so, the logout. And the logout. Yep. So if you log out now, just to show the the dark theme login. 
And that's basically it. I mean, if, you, if you're familiar with valence already, um, you know, I think you'll, as far as, you know, you just the functionality has been moved in a different couple of places and, you know, it's just a new look. But as far as, you know, the overall flow and how it all works, this it's all identical. Excellent. Maybe if you want to switch to tab view just to show it. Oh, okay, yeah. That, that's been updated a bit. I mean, it's essentially the same thing still, but just a cleaner look. So I think in the old in the old one, it was sometimes it was hard to determine what what, what the active tab was. We made that a bit more obvious now. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna switch back out of the bat though. Yeah. And I think that's it. It's, you know, and obviously as we're going through more of these developer diaries, I mean, we're gonna be using the portal. So, uh, you know, if anything else pops up that's worth mentioning, we'll <laughs> mention it then. But I think that's really it. So okay. if you wanna go into the app builder grid now. Yeah. Okay, let's just quickly create a data source so we can, <clears throat> oops, I don't want it. Um, <clears throat> our good old customers. Yeah, that hasn't changed for Valence 6. So that's yeah, still, it's still our there. default uh, file to use. All right. Okay, so we'll start with just the grid, not the edit grid. Um, to go over some of these new features. Okay, I'm just going to get a little bit of stuff going here. Okay, so what for current customers, what you're expecting to see, a, a lot of things here are the same, I mean, other than we're in the dark theme, right? Um, the first thing we like to talk about with the grid is that you'll see that we have two new options in the column section, which is one is number rows. So I'm gonna switch that. And then I'm just gonna bring up this bottom area. And you just automatically get a, a row number. Um, sometimes this could be useful. So it will automatically put the row number in there. And then also if you decided to allow the user to download this, that row number would be added to outside of Excel. Excel already has its own numbering. Then the other thing we have is row body. So, and Sean, step in if I'm not. Definitely some theme updates here we need. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can see that. So, yeah, we should, you know, take that. I'm going to take a screenshot. Um, so, row body, you know what? I think I'm going to, should I get out of this? Yeah, maybe just go to the, we're still working on the dark theme. Maybe just go to. Okay. Um, so, this row body, I'm just going to quickly just throw something in here. I'm not going to, I'm just going to click, here's your available field based off your data source. I'm not going to do anything else. I just clicked on the address line one. Okay. That's it. So let's just see what do we, what happens there. So you can see that it gives you another row, which we're calling row body on, on the row. So it gives a body to the row, which is below your, your normal columns and you can place whatever you'd like there. So it could be, formatted this is just this is just really going to be could be html markup so you'll have access to your data source but then you can also do your own html markup to style it in any way you'd like um, for example uh, I don't know, div um, maybe put a padding and then and a border around it or something just to padding, show yeah APX and uh, I don't know, maybe font size. 
Yeah. And like border one px solid. I don't know pound CCC or something. Not that this is going to look nice, but no, just to, just to, to show, it. right? You forgot your end. Uh, uh, <clears throat> pound CCC. Wait, so what I miss? It's up to your imagination, you know, or you know, you right. can put any HTML markup, you know. We've already had a beta customer put a table, you know, within this. So they have, you know, a, a, a drop down and there's almost like a, you know, a table of, of, of additional information in there. And really the, the, the thought for this is we see a lot of customers that'll put many columns on grids and they, and they have scrolling left to right, which is often, you know, a, a no, no. And in, in that you don't want, you don't want horizontal scrolling. So hopefully this will alleviate that if you need a bunch of information that you could just use the row body and, and, and put your additional data beneath the main row. Right. And then the other thing, I guess, is the last thing on row body is that you can make it expandable so it's not always showing. It's up to the user to, to view that information. So I just clicked on expandable, just a checkbox. And now the user needs to request to, to drop that information down and see it. Nice. You know, there is one other change in the, uh, if you click the formatting on, on one of those selected columns. Uh, this formatting? Yeah, I think okay. we, we, do we added, uh, we oh. added that size bold italic as well. Oh, nice. Okay. So you can change the font size to say extra large. It's going to look really good. Bold and italics. There you go. Excellent. I'm going to remove that. I think, I think that's, that's it for the, the, the base grid. Yeah. Um, I guess we should show, since we're here, it's filters. Uh, of course, this isn't grid related, but since we're in here, we might as well just show it. We did add a, um, allow you to have a multi-select, uh, combo. So let's just say I want to do, what do we have a store for? States or, or countries? Uh, we have states. Okay. I'm just going to state them. state equal to, and I'm going to transform it to a drop down, which we used to always have the ability to do. Let me just find states. There we go. Um, display field, chart field. Here you're going to see this multi-select and this allows you to allows the user to choose multiple items in that in that drop down to filter your your widget itself. Of course, this isn't specific to the grid because these filters can be on any of the available widgets. So let's just save that and see what we get. Okay, so state. Now you see this drop down. It's going to be a little wider than normal because it is a field that will show multiple. So I'm going to select. Sure, California, and I can pick another Illinois. So now we're seeing just California, Illinois. So this was something that was asked for quite a lot. Um, so yeah, I thought I'd throw that in there because we're in the, yeah. the widget. All right, I think that's, that's it for the base grid. The row body, the number, uh, row number, um, the renderer that you pointed out, and then we just showed the snuck in the filter. So I'm just going to save that. Okay, so we want to show off a bit of the features for the edit grid. I think I'll just transform it to an edit grid. We can do that. If you have a grid and you need to make it then an edit grid, you can just choose this option. <clears throat> All right. So the grid's gonna look pretty much the same as it was before. However, now we're gonna go into edit mode. 
And I don't know, let's say um, when editing, they can change the sure state and country and zip. So normally, and I don't know if I can, can I do this in, no, I can't. I don't think so. I wonder if I should just save this then and create an app quickly. Yeah. Let me just save that. So right now we just set it up to say, allow the user to edit the state, the country, and the zip. So we're gonna quickly create an app because we don't allow for editing within editing when you're editing the widget itself. It needs to be done in the app when the app's actually running. Sorry about that. Okay. Here's the app we just created with that edit grid. And we had three fields that we said allow for edit. So now it's still the same. I double click it. It comes up with a dialog box with those two, three fields that we can edit. However, now we're going to change that a bit. So instead of just the default that existing customers are used to, um, we have this drop down that has the, you can choose row or cell edit. So I think by first, I'll just choose row. And I'm going to save that. And I'm going to switch back to customers. I'm going to reload the frame. This is a quick way just to relaunch the app to get the update. Okay. Now when I double click now, it looks a little different. It's actually in line on the row. I don't have to go and say, um, you know, get that dialogue box. Okay. And of course, I think I just pointed something out, right, Sean, did you notice this? So I chose three fields, but one of those fields are, is not a column in the grid. Right. So it's not just gonna add it. It's gonna be only the columns that are available on the grid for the, the row edit or cell edit. So I guess, let me just change everything. So it's gonna be, you know, And it updates just like it used to. Let me go to App Builder and we'll change it to Cell. So instead of Row, we say Cell. We'll show what that behavior looks like. So with cell, it's a little style, a little differently. It's trying to show that the user, they, they can edit this cell directly. So if I click on it or double click on, it, I should say, now I'm, I'm able to change it. So I can go in here and UI, hit enter. And then that, that, that record has been updated. So it's a different way to update. So they having to have the whole dialog box. If you have one or two columns, cell editing might be really beneficial to you. You know, something we should point out is that that each in the cell editing, each time you make a change, <clears throat> it's making the call to update that row, you know, one field at a time. Right. So if you had if you had a grid that, you know, you had, you know, many items editable, it probably wouldn't make sense to use that because, you know, you're, you're going to be firing off saves all the time, you know, for, for each change. Yeah, so that's a good point. Yeah, so then you would either fall back to the row edit or the original, just a dialogue that comes up and shows all your, your feelings. Right. All right. I think that's... Oh, yeah. This is going to be a short one. Yep. Just want we want to just first dive in to just show off the the new portal and some of the new features on the grid and edit grid. So just to recap, base grid has 
the row body and row expander to show more information inside your rows if you want to. Um, the filters uh, drop down can be multi select or filtering, and that's across all widgets, it's not just a grid, it's not just on grids, but we were using a grid today, so we wanted to show that. And then the edit grid has the cell edit and row editing instead of popping up a dialog if you, if you, if you feel like that's a better solution for your app. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's it we were going to cover today. You have anything else, Sean? Not that I can think of. All right, awesome. Well, if there's no questions or anything, uh, actually, something just popped up. Oh, nice. Okay, so I'm just saying it looks good. Thank so, you, yeah, Theory. If no one has any, um, yeah, thanks, Theory. Uh, if no one has any questions on these, then we'll uh, kick off another session next week. Um, we'll send an update and update the calendar on CNX's website of the topic. It'll be more features and bells and whistles for Valence 6. All right. Well, thanks. And everybody have a good rest of your day and have a good weekend. All right. See you later. All right. Bye now.